Hey, welcome back to Workshop Quick Takes. If you've been on Amazon or eBay recently, you may have noticed a recent proliferation of combination dash cam rear view mirrors in the remarkable range of about $100. I grabbed one at random, it was the Acaso DL12. Acaso seems to be a company that manufactures a lot of low cost GoPro competitors and then they also have a line of dash cam mirrors. This particular one has a 2K front facing camera on the back of a mirror that straps over your existing rear view mirror and then it also has a 1080p rear view camera. It does dash cam features as well as reverse cam. So for hundred bucks, is it worth it? Let's take a look at it today and find out. How good is a $110 dash cam kit from Amazon? And I don't just mean a dash cam, I mean like rear view mirror, cameras both directions and dash cam features. That's the cheapest price I've seen for anything of this nature. So I'm curious how well it holds up compared to the higher price competition because some of the better kits I've seen start like around, I don't know, 170. So there's the mirror. Um, as a mirror goes, I guess it's all right for car duty. It does seem to have a little bit of light reduction on it. And if I tilt it in the light, it's kind of hard to see, but let's get up close. Kind of see the edge of the uh, TFT display that's underneath there, but okay. One additional cost is I'm gonna have to provide some sort of a micro SD card. For the time being, I've got a spare four gig kicking around that we'll just stick in there to see what happens. There we go. A little tricky to get in and out of there. Then I got two more ports here. Well, three technically. I've got a USB for power. I've got AV, which I believe is where the rear camera plugs in. And then I've got GPS, which is where it acquires the GPS signal. Here's the front camera. This is one of those ones that's designed just to uh, clip over the existing rear view mirror using a couple uh, like rubberized straps that hold it from the back. I'm not sure if I want to do it that way or if I want to try and customize this to mount it directly to a mirror bracket, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. For now, I just want to actually see it turn on and figure out how sensitive it actually is. There's the USB it comes with. Obviously, I'm going to have to do something a little different if I want to permanently wire it. There's the GPS, which is meant to just uh, stick onto the windshield where it can get a good visibility of the satellites. Here's the additional um, bracket mounting materials. Got the uh, rubber uh, straps that pull it onto the uh, rear view mirror. And then, oh, okay, Akasogo Club. Let's get a good look at that. Akasogo.com slash club. So apparently, by buying from this random Chinese company on Amazon, I've now joined something. Comes with a little bit of a trim panel crowbar, I guess, if you need to pop stuff out to, in order to get the wiring routed around to the back. This doesn't seem to be any better or worse quality than all of the other cheap plastic ones I've broken before. Silica desiccant, do not eat. Okay, that's everything. So let's see what I can do to wire this up. And I'm gonna need a micro USB. Oh, and that's a, uh, that's not a micro A. I think that's a mini A. Okay. Here's the rear camera, and if I understand correctly, this red wire coming out of the rear camera bracket can be wired into the reverse light circuit, and that way you'll automatically get a rear view cam whenever the reverse light comes on. So, let me get a USB-A cable, plug it into the wall since I don't have a DC port handy nearby, and we'll see what it does. Every time I think I'm done with these cables forever, another reason to use one shows up again. It's kind of strange, but... Okay, so I've got that plugged into a USB wall outlet. And before I do the rest, let's go ahead and just get the accessories plugged in so that everything's good to go. There's my GPS. No way is it going to get a signal down here, but we'll plug it in anyway just to see what it does. Okay. Wish they'd have hid that in an internal uh, port or something so that it didn't have these wires popping out where they could just get popped loose, but it is what it is. So there's our rear camera. And I don't know if I'm gonna to have to put a 12 volt signal on here or not in order to get a result out of it, but I guess we'll find out. Power cord. Okay, it's got ringtones. SD card need to format. Okay, so it's displaying review right now. Just for fun, let's see what happens if I go dark. Um. All things considered, that is surprisingly good low light pickup. Doesn't even have an auxiliary LED as far as I can tell. I guess I could wire a couple back there if I really wanted them, some infrared ones or something. Okay, well, let's try going through the settings and see what it does. 
G sensor. Oh, so I can set the uh, how sensitive I want it to be before it actually trips a uh, accident recording if someone hits the car while it's parked, for example. Parking guard. Okay, clearly I'm gonna have to read some settings. Screensaver, uh, yeah, off. Um, mirror image, oh, interesting. Key voice? Speaker middle, why not? Boot sound? Oh, hey, I can turn that off. I think I will. Stream media? Language? Um, I think I'll stick with English. Date and time? 2021-02-27. Hey, it's, um, it's not quite correct, but it's close. I wonder what time zone that was set for. 9.20 p.m. Local time. There we go. But yeah, that's almost dead on. Yes, go ahead. How do I... Oh, there we go. Just swipe. So now I've got one front, one back view. That's handy. Swipe again. Front view only. Wow. So now the question is, if I'm just driving down the street and I want a normal mirror, how do I shut the uh, screen off? You know, now that I'm already deep into this, maybe I should be reading that. From a theater in their micro SD cart. Um, formatting the micro SD card, there we go. Okay, so I've already done that step. Touchscreen operation, switch front and rear camera on the screen, slide from left to right or right to left. Adjust the view of the camera angle, interesting. Slide up or down on the left hand side. Oh, hey, look at that. Okay, so I'm currently on front, let's go rear. Interesting, front ordinary video. Oh, that's where I can actually uh, delete these if I want. I gotta say, for 110 bucks, this thing is doing a lot. And it's the quality, I don't know how well it'll hold up once it's installed in a car for a while. But for the money, this does an awful lot. Switch front and rear camera, already figured that out. Just the screen brightness. Oh, hey, on the right hand side of the screen. Whoa. Okay, that does go a lot brighter than I thought. Well, let's kill the lights again. Yeah, that's more than enough light to back up by. I mean, the light across the laundry room here is no better than what I'd be getting from my reverse lights at night. Okay, so there's a few things to remember that are not obvious. Slide on the left-hand side of the screen to adjust field of view. Slide on the right-hand side of the screen to adjust brightness. Swipe back and forth to change camera views. I mean, it's not 100% intuitive, but there's just not that much going on here. Huh. I thought maybe it needed a permanent power supply, but I see a battery icon over there. Wonder how long that lasts once it's installed in a car environment. So 2K, plus 10, 2K front plus 1080p rear or 1.5K front plus 1080p rear, if I remember correctly. Loop record, three minutes, five minutes, I mean, whatever you're in the mood for. Record audio, G-sensor, parking guard, screensaver. So, acasotech.com. In any case, I got this off of Amazon for about 110, and it seems to do everything it advertised it would do. So, I guess the next thing to do is go ahead and route the cables in the car and get it installed. Right here, we've got the three wires that will come down out of the front of the trim panel right there, and then hook up on top here to drive a uh, clip over dash cam slash reverse cam mirror. GPS module for that same device is right there. But anyway, all of the new wiring follows the existing loom along here and has been tied into it, and then down. Then that goes down below the door right there and then comes out behind the glove box where eventually I'm going to have to do some power wiring. And I'll probably do my power wiring off of the two existing outlets. The cigarette lighter is only on with the ignition, but this so-called power outlet here is on all the time right now. So that gives me two sources of power. I could, if I wanted to, always have the dash cam running off of power here, although I probably won't. I'm afraid it draws going to draw too much idle current. But anyway, I can come back into this panel and get power supplies and then put subfuses on them to uh, deal with the uh, extra wiring to be required down in here. And I'm, and I'm probably going to take the dash cam power supply wiring out of this lighter socket 
and just put it in the project box so that I can wear it directly. Well, that's that. Would I buy it again? Mm, maybe. It's not without its flaws. So far, for example, I have not yet seen the GPS actually give me a miles per hour reading. It just says they're stuck at zero. I'm not sure if that means I need to reset the unit or if maybe it needs a firmware update. I haven't checked for that yet. I'll look at it eventually. But for now, for the money, it does do exactly what you would hope. It has uh, dash cam features, including accident capture. If, if the uh, mirror detects a shock, then it will actually start recording for a short clip but the quality is, eh. You can pick up license plates if they're nearby, but at a distance, it might be hard to tell what was going on. You'll definitely be able to make out the make and model of vehicles. The ability to show split screen view on the camera or on the mirror display is really neat, but for reverse cam, it's not as bright as you might hope it would be. It's kind of hard in bright sunlight to actually see the image over the reflection of the uh, just rear view mirror, especially if you're wearing polarized sunglasses. So for a hundred bucks, would I buy it again? Definitely. If I wanted to make sure I had high quality uh, video footage for accident reporting, as well as bright, high quality rear view footage for, you know, say a commercial vehicle, probably not. Great as a toy, definitely punches above its weight. For the money, sure, get it. But if you need high quality, it's just not gonna do it, and the price is what it is. So that's all there is to say about it, but I'm gonna keep it for now. Thanks for joining me on Workshop Quick Takes. We'll see you next time. Has anyone seen my phone?